Hi everyone, so you might have seen my rogue rip the other day against Malfas. If not, here's this great moment yet again. So it was a very unfortunate rip because I was just trying to grind up for the gauntlet. I was trying to prepare, especially with the original announcement we had for the February 13th launch date being only like a week away from this point. But I lost my rogue here right before the gauntlet and I was very upset. And it was a very surprising and unexpected rip to be honest. So somehow I died like seconds after the boss was already defeated by this one lightning beam coming straight across the room and sniping me. Uh, that was very strange to be fair and maybe bugged. I don't know exactly because previously I had never even noticed this thing doing any damage. But here we are. So I had a dead rogue and I had to fix it. So what better thing to do than just extend my stream by 15 hours and go again. Or so I thought actually because turns out I was way faster than that. So originally on the season launch, you might have seen my uh, race on, or my post, for example, here on X, where I um, finished after 17 hours or 16 hours, 55 minutes for uh, the world first on hardcore level 100. And I figured, yeah, the rogue will be probably along those lines if I try hard a little bit, or it will be yeah, maybe a bit slower than the barb. But it turns out I completely blew away that record with a 12 hours and 48 minutes time so this is what i posted here on x yesterday and uh, i want to go through this and you know some of the things that i've done some of the tips that i can give for people that want to level fast and just talk about the journey a little bit so i loaded up live split to have the timer on the screen then i got some drinks and we started blasting and well when you start a fresh character the first thing you usually want to do is finish the entire season quest line now, this is not exactly a speedrun strategy. In fact, it just slows you down for no real reason because the pet is kind of irrelevant in the early game, at least. It starts popping off later once you have it fully maxed out and you have the unique stones, etc. The pet is really good, but when it comes to leveling 1 to 100, it's just a waste of time. I decided I'd do it anyway because, well, I actually want to play this character. It's not just for the race. But you can probably easily cut out like at least half an hour or so of just doing the quest line. If you follow the quest line step by step all the way to the Malfas quest in the end, it takes you roughly an hour or so. And well, you do level up a little bit doing that, but it's ultimately way faster just going straight to domain tunnels, for example, and just grinding XP all the way to nightmare difficulty. I didn't do that here. So if you really wanted, you can actually beat that 12 hours, 48 minutes quite easily because of this. And for another reason, which is that I decided to kill every single butcher and son of Malfas I encountered. And I kind of estimate that this also lost me like another half hour or so. So sub 12 hours is quite doable going 1 to 100 at least on a rogue. Probably not as fast as, as this on other classes but uh, as I said early in the season I did a 17 hours on double swing barb which to my knowledge is the fastest time until now uh, and that was a season start scenario. So here this is not exactly season start scenario because well I did use some of the materials I had like you know I rolled my items a little bit more when otherwise I wouldn't have Forgotten Souls. So I was slightly stronger than I should be, for example, but I didn't decide to use any of my Twink gear for my stash, for example. I could have equipped, you know, way better items, 925 weapons. I could have equipped for Unique on Duriel and these kind of things. I decided I'm just going to go with the stuff I find. So it was almost a season start scenario, just a little bit optimistic. And I also decided to use Type 1 instances. So they were relatively cheap to craft. And I decided to just get a few of them and just pop them as I level up, starting from like level 50 or so. So in the end, yeah, I lost like roughly an hour or so from not exactly following a speedrun strategy, but I also gained a little bit back um, on the way to 100 compared to a season start scenario. Either way, the one thing to level up, at least when you're starting out, 1 to 150 or so, or 1 to 40, is Domhand Tunnels. So this is the famous dungeon in Skazglen, also called Dopamine Tunnels. This is where you get a lot of XP. It's very easy. There's tons of density. There's only normal monsters besides like one unique monster that pops up there. And you just circle through part one of the dungeon, ignore all the objectives, and then go out and reset. In the case of a rogue, I was playing Pen Turning Shot. This is the Pen RF build. It's like the rogue meta this season. Ranged rogues in general are really powerful. And this build is the best to deal with this insane density that you have here. There are also other builds like Barrage and Rapid Fire that are working very similarly, just like a bit worse at clearing RE, but much better at single target. But in this case, you don't need single target damage very much. Just occasionally I use my Rapid Fire here to like clean up some of the big guys or the elite here and there. 
And other than that, it's just like Penshot and Shadow Imbuement that carry you through this. There are leveling builds like this for other classes as well. Everyone can farm Domain Tunnels pretty efficiently. And Rogue is not exactly that great in this scenario compared to some others. I just try to be as fast as possible, trying to make large pulls, using my cooldowns properly so I can get out of this the fastest way possible. And it turns out that after like roughly one hour and 20 minutes or so, I was kind of ready to take on Malfas. I took him down from the seasonal quest line. I had this thing completed. So if you just follow the quest line, you can do it a bit faster. And I decided to level up a little bit first to like gear up a little bit, find a new weapon, imprint it, and so on. So the rest of this uh, until nightmare difficulty is just again domain tunnels. You can also farm other stuff. You can even farm other dungeons, but this is just the fastest, way better than whispers for sure. So I just did like a few whispers here. I did like one turn in or something here or, or two at the end, right before I got ready for nightmare difficulty. And I farmed all the way up to level 35. Now 35, Capstone Dungeon is relatively early, but the thing is that in this case, I was ready to go because I have the power of the Rogue and the Precision Passive. I knew that it is very powerful because I had leveled another Rogue already and ranged Rogues really profit from this, especially in the early game. So you have the power to nuke down those elites in the Capstone Dungeon, and as long as you can survive, you're gonna be fine. In this case, survival is mostly a matter of stacking armor and resistances. If you just do those two things and you cap out on both and you capped out on the general damage reduction that you're supposed to have even relatively early or maybe get close to it at least this will already go a long way this is exactly what i've done for example back in season two when uh, i played my blue rogue up to tier 100 and i killed durial with it uh, on hardcore and i've only stacked armor and resistances so this is kind of like the baseline of defenses you're trying to establish with any character and if you have extra defenses that's even better for example like might aspects or you know other defensive aspects that you may have on other classes and maybe some damage reduction rolls one other neat thing that you can use especially going to world tier 3 or world tier 4 early is the magic resist elixir it's not that expensive to craft so especially if this is an alt of yours you can just you know get a few of those pots and this will greatly help you to reduce the incoming damage because you see here right now i have like around 40 50 ish of all the resistances and then you pop this thing and you can cap out on some of them from this point giving you something like you know maybe only half the damage taken or you know maybe only two thirds of the damage taken against those uh, elements and similar with the armor you see here i have 46 percent damage reduction already which is very far away from the armor cap of 85. And this is also against monsters of my own level. It doesn't actually count the monster level of the zone you're in. So here in the Capstone Dungeon, there's level 50 monsters and the cap would be much higher. And my actual damage reduction is much lower than it shows here. But the more the merrier. And especially once you go into World Tier 4, so it starts becoming way easier to cap your armor. So while it's somewhat impossible early, even with Juggernaut aspect and Disobedience aspect, it will get better and better as you go and it's somewhat easy to get to the armor cap which does change dynamically depending on the monster level however having like three 4k armor in world tier 3 or then entering world tier 4 with something like 5 6 7k armor is usually kind of a good target to shoot for and then as you approach level 100 you're aiming for something like around 9k armor the Cathedral of Light itself wasn't really such a big deal because I know the dungeon pretty well. I've leveled many characters, so I know the boss fight, I know the objectives and how to deal with them. And we have the power of the rogue here. So in this case, I went with rapid fire to defeat the boss and it was fairly easy. Now, the thing is that some people always ask me like, you know, what to do when they go into capstone dungeons, when should they go, etc. And that's always a bit up to you. It depends on which build you're playing, how well you play it. And also what is maybe your state of progression have you found some good drops etc but level 35 or 36 is definitely very early to do it and i think this is actually some of the fastest or the earliest i've done this so around two hours in we were in the world tier 3 and i usually recommend people to go a bit later like 40 at the earliest maybe 45 even depending on you know how it's going for you the thing is that also when you go into world tier 3 you can't actually equip any sacred items until you hit level 45 they have a minimum level of 45 and similar ancestors have a minimum level of 60. so while you can farm up a few items to then equip immediately at 45 it's usually quite slow and dangerous to do so especially on hardcore so usually it's not a bad idea to just stay in domain tunnels and farm some more levels first especially if it would slow down too much so here this is actually exactly what i tried i went to world tier 3 and then i went back to domain tunnels to try to get some more levels because it remains you know a pretty good xp spot 
even with Nightmare Dungeons or in Season 3 Nightmare Vaults unlocked. I'm going to talk more about the vaults in a second. And here you can just, you know, kind of make these large pulls and try to get an experience. But you are extremely underleveled, as you can see. Or in my case, I'm extremely underleveled. I'm 18 levels below the monsters. And usually the target for leveling is 10 levels below the monsters. Because this is where you can get the maximum experience bonus. You get plus 15% of the experience. And also the base XP of the monster is higher. But you don't get credit for monsters higher than 10 levels above you. So in this case, I should be fighting level 47 monsters if I could. However, those monsters do not exist, at least not for my character currently. Because the outer world scales with your level, but there is this minimum level of 55 in Nightmare and 75 in Torment. But it was going well enough anyway, especially due to me like capping my resistances, which at this point have been uncapped again because I went to Nightmare difficulty, so I get this minus 25 penalty, but it was still fine and I had a lot of armor thanks to the disobedience and juggernaut aspects so like this i was able to kind of like tank most of these monsters use my uh, construct for the healing i really like the reconstructability of the healing beam that you see here right now this helps you out a lot in season three but also depending on the seasonal theme if you're watching this in the future for example there may be other powers that help you out here one thing to keep in mind when moving on to a higher difficulty is that you should really not slow down too much. It's fine to go slower because you get a higher experience modifier. You get instead of 20% from World Tier 2, you get 100% in World Tier 3 and even 200% bonus in World Tier 4, uh, which you know does make it quite a lot more valuable. But on the other hand, if I went to World Tier 2 and I started farming domain tunnels, I can just like breeze through them. You know, I make a large pull, blow up the entire room and keep going. But in this case, I think I was roughly the same pace in terms of experience I could have gained. We're going in World Tier 3. So if you look at this here, this is kind of an acceptable pace to go. And the other thing is that I can also start preparing sacred items for when I hit level 45. And just doing those domain tunnels here for like 9 levels straight actually gave me quite a bunch of loot. So you see this here right now, this is the moment when I hit level 45, which was 2.5 hours in. And I had already collected a good bunch of sacred yellow items here in my inventory that I was going through. So we got a nice ring, got a weapon, we actually got a crossbow there as well, I think. And this gives you a huge power spike, especially those weapons. So every time you go to World Tier 3 or then from World Tier 3 to World Tier 4, you try to get a few of those items that give you like a huge power spike, like, you know, lots of extra armor, resists, and of course a weapon. And if that is not happening for you, you can also try to farm for example, some of the outdoor events. They're usually fairly easy and they usually give you like this chest at the end where you get a bunch of items and they may be sacred and you might get a weapon there. So if you get unlucky in the domain tunnels, which actually doesn't drop very much loot, you see here, this is basically all the loot I gathered from those nine levels of farming there. Um, it's not very much because there's simply no elites, but events usually are fine and they give you these extra yellow drops. And you see here that with the power of the sacred items and a few other drops I found on the way, for example, from the capstone dungeon, they are also like relatively high level items. I was fine again. I had like 2.6k armor. This is in town. No juggernaut aspect displayed here and also no disobedience up. So with both these things, I would reach something like 4k armor or so already, which I estimate at least probably gives me something like 60 plus percent damage reduction against nightmare level monsters level 55. So that is already pretty fine. And you see also the resistances, you can, you know, try to like even it out a bit with the gems and just try to focus on the most on fire and lighting resistances. I think those are by far the most dangerous elements in the game. And then, yeah, you want to try to catch up with that with cold. And then poison and shadow are kind of, you know, not that relevant here, which in my case were actually kept out and the rest wasn't. But you can kind of go down from top to bottom in terms of the importance of the elements in my book. And from this point forward, it was basically time to start blasting Nightmare Vaults. So vaults in Season 3 are basically the new and improved Nightmare Dungeons. They are very packed, there's a lot of density, they're very easy, and they don't have bosses to fight, which makes it so that you can actually make skill setups or like builds that just don't have any single target damage at all, basically. In my case, I was still running with the typical Pen RF build, but for example, I threw in like a smoke grenade here just to be a bit safer. You know, I daze them and I do a bit of extra damage instead of dash usually. And this is like kind of like tech that I use on a rogue, for example, whenever I deal with like high-end content or like harder content, for example, like this. And you see here, I would have the power to even like blast down those elites in one shot sometimes. So that was really nice, especially with like the new weapon that I had now. Uh, I was able to kind of like comfortably get through those Nightmare Dungeons. But in the end, in Nightmare Difficulty, you could also just farm Domain Tunnels all the way 
to, you know, whenever you're ready for World Tier 4, like level 60 or so like that. The thing is that in Nightmare Dungeons and equally in Nightmare Balls, you get bonus experience. Uh, it is 30% in Nightmare Difficulty and 80% in Torment Difficulty. So this is kind of like the patch that uh, Blizzard has done at some point to improve leveling speed and to make sure that people no longer want to farm normal dungeons like we do in the early game. But in World Tier 1 and 2, there are no Nightmare Dungeons, so we can't farm them for the bonus XP, so we farm them in Tunnels. However, in World Tier 3, it is somewhat comparable, actually. So you can farm the vaults, or you can farm Domain Tunnels. I didn't know an exact benchmark, but 30% bonus is simply not that crazy compared to the higher difficulty of the vaults and uh, also like the lower density. While they are kind of packed, they're not as good as Domain Tunnels. But either way, in my case, I decided to stick to it. I just went with the vaults, even though I couldn't really get any Glyph XP yet. You have to wait until 50 to get a Glyph uh, XP at the end, but you get a lot more loot, which is also pretty helpful in the vaults. There's always these extra chests at the end, so you get a bunch of sacred items here, and it can gear up way faster. And at this point, it should start feeling a lot easier once you have like a good suit of sacred items. And since I was trying to go into the next world tiers very early, I decided to do the same thing again for world tier 4. And just the moment I hit level 50, which was around 3 hours in, I started preparing for the second capstone dungeon to go to the Fallen Temple and go Torment difficulty. Level 50 is important because you get a huge power spike there. This is when you unlock paragons and you can like start clicking all these nodes. And uh, like this, you get like you know another 20, 30% or so extra damage out of nowhere and a bunch of extra res and life and all that, depending on the class, whatever is in your starting board. And I decided to do like one extra pass on my gear, upgrade some items, imprint it with some new stuff, and I was ready to go. So level 50 for the rogue, that is not really such a big deal, turns out. Going into the capstone dungeons, I was also able to kind of decimate elites in like one combo here. As you can see, for example, this one, uh, rapid fire with the position is just so powerful. So it was no trouble at all. And the thing is that, especially in the second capstone dungeon, you don't have that many objectives. There's actually not that many monsters you have to kill in there. There's only like these animus carriers in the part 3. But compared to the first capstone dungeon, we have to do this like a slay all objective. Uh, that can really drag out a long time. But here you just rush through, you can kind of ignore most of the uh, monsters and do the objective, and then you do the next one, and then you do the animus carriers. And then you only have to deal with Elias. So Elias, if you know the fight well, is not really that hard because, uh, well, he just has a bunch of like easily dodgeable abilities. And uh, with the damage I had, I was able to take him down in like half a minute or so on the rogue. So level 50 is usually not what I would recommend to do Elias at. And uh, here a lot of people have trouble with him doing it early. So again, I recommend you to farm up more levels and maybe do it at 60 or so. You get a bunch more paragons, you get a bunch more item drops while nightmare difficulty. But ultimately, you try to get out of Nightmare Difficulty as fast as possible because there's nothing you can gain there that really gives you anything. You can farm Whispers, you can farm Helltide, and you do get a bit of stuff there, for example. But ultimately, all the important stuff is in World Tier 4. Even if you farm Whispers, you can't get Millennium Hearts in World Tier 3. If you farm Helltide for Living Steel, you get much less of it. So you don't really want to stay in Nightmare Difficulty. And in this case, I also wanted to level fast, and I was already kind of decently strong to the point where I figured I could try to go Torment Difficulty. So I always try to get out of Nightmare Difficulty really quickly. And here you see it took like around an hour to go from Capstone 1 completed to Capstone 2 completed. And at this point, being in Torment Difficulty, it's definitely time to start farming those walls. So you start crafting a few of those T21 sigils, which is the lowest, and they have level 75 monsters, which is again the lowest you can have in ton of difficulty. And here with the 80% bonus XP, there's nothing that beats Nightmare Dungeons or Nightmare Vaults in particular in terms of experience grind per hour. So I went in there and actually in my first uh, vault, I was greeted with the Butcher and also the Son of Malphas. And well, I told you about it. I had this principle. I wanted to defeat all of them. So I was level 50 here against this <laughs> level 75 Butcher. Which, well, did take quite a long time, but I did take him down without too much trouble in the end. And then we had uh, also the other guy here somewhere popping up in, in the same run. So this was my entry to Torment Difficulty. It was kind of funny. But again, uh, both of these bosses are not to be too dangerous if you actually know how to play around their attacks. And uh, being a rogue, it's also like, easier because you you know can dash around and you're faster and stuff like that than some of the other classes. But again, it kind of slowed me down. So this fight here, you see, um, this was like three minutes or something. 
yeah, pretty much around three minutes. Butcher fight's kind of somewhat similar, so just this first dungeon was very slow because of this. And ultimately, whenever you find them and you don't really have to single target damage, like in my case here, like a three minute fight is unacceptable. You should not do it. You should just run away and let them, you know, run behind you until they disappear. Uh, it's kind of a waste of time unless you can actually defeat Butcher in, let's say, half a minute or something. I would not really do it if you're trying to level fast. So this was just out of principle, just to have some fun and to see if I can actually do it. And it turns out it was okay. Now, the good thing is with farming vaults and being in torment difficulty very early is that you unlock ancestrals and you can start preparing for level 60, similar to how you start preparing items for uh, Nightmare for level 45 of the end secrets. So in this case, uh, in vaults, you get so much loot from opening all the chests at the end. You don't really have to deal with like many targets. You can just like blast down the big AOE packs. And again, you see here there's a bunch of ancestral items. And going all these levels from like 50 to 60 actually gave me a lot of loot. So I was prepared once I hit level 60. So while these initial runs in Torment difficulty were kind of slow and dangerous because I was so undergeared and underleveled, I did hit level 60 yeah, around 4 hours 19 minutes in. And I had a bunch of ancestral items to equip. So similar to how I did it with the secrets, here I did like a big, you know, equipment session and started upgrading and rolling my gear a little bit. I'm printing everything with some new stuff. And suddenly I had a lot more res, a lot more armor, and I was basically ready to go. There were actually some real gems I found on the way from 50 to 60. In this like one hour or so I had spent in World Tier 4 at that point. And I was actually carrying some of these items all the way to level 100. So usually when you're on a speed level, you don't really care that much about the quality of your gear. It's kind of fine to just go with something that gives you, you know, a bunch of decent stats. It doesn't have to be like four out of four defensive on the chest piece. It doesn't have to be like a perfect ring with like, you know, crit and life and the resource or something like that. If it just has like the resource roll, you're kind of good to go. Or like an amulet, for example, I just want to get some movement speed, maybe cooldown and I'm good to go. So I try to kind of get some good pieces early on and kind of leave them on as long as possible. Because ultimately, all the gear you find at this stage of the game is pretty worthless later on as you approach a 100, as you do durial runs and higher nightmare dungeons and you can get 925 loot very easily there. Um, you don't really want to keep most of these items at least later on. But for leveling up and doing monsters that are 10 levels above you, it's usually really strong. So there's like this huge power spike you get once you un unlock the ancestors, try to get a bunch of decent items. But ultimately, you can kind of stop caring about loot for most of the slots at this point. And as I described earlier, it's also much easier to hit the res and the armor caps at this point. So try to focus on extra res rolls wherever you can. Even on a Sorg or a Necromancer or a Druid that have like a relatively easy time capping out the resistances, it's usually worth going for some res rolls during the level up stage, but then later on you can drop them in your level 100, you have a full Paragon board and so on. But you see here, for example, um, even with non-upgraded rings, I have like already like 55 of fire and lighting res and like there's a shadow res and I don't even have any gems. So once I upgrade all the stuff, I'm going to be fine basically. And similarly, we have the armor value here, for example, 4.5k in town with no juggernaut aspect, with no disobedience aspect. And with season three, it's journey giving you the juggernaut aspect. You can get like, you know, 1, 2k or so already at this level just from this one extra aspect and it becomes much easier to cap out your physical resistances and your elemental resistances together. And for example, if you find a chest piece like this here that has like a res and a damage reduction mod and a bit of extra life, that's like completely golden all the way to level 100. I think I'm actually still wearing this chest on my rogue at this point. So uh, that was actually a relatively good find here. <laughs> But uh, getting like one or two life rolls at this stage, you see here, 660 maximum life is a lot because the base life at level 60 is very low. You're going to have like 2k base life or something like that. And uh, with this item equipped and like another ring roll that has life, suddenly I can double my life or something like that. So life rolls are super valuable early on. And from that point forward, it was basically blast mode activated. I was four and a half hours in, spent a bit of time like gearing and rolling my gear and all that. And I read, I've redesigned my build a little bit to be just faster, uh, include the dash, don't have rapid fire anymore. And like this, I was just absolutely annihilating. So you see this here, like I dropped the rapid fire from the bar, for example. And uh, well, the pen shots are starting to pop off here, like one shotting these entire packs. At this point, I knew I was fine and I could just blast all the way. And the thing is that even without really changing your equipment very much from this point forward, going with the way to 100, you still get a lot of power farming those vaults, getting those, those glyphs XP, unlocking the paragons, putting the glyphs in and so on. So that 
you don't really need to improve your gear all that much. If you find a new weapon here and there, that's okay. Maybe you find some other new items, or maybe you just didn't find a good ancestral piece at all in some of the slots. But ultimately, after spending uh, a bit of time, like, you know, 10 runs or something like that in Torment difficulty, you should have a decent amount of uh, ancestral pieces that give you the option to just uh, kind of like deck out your character and then blast all the way to 100. And you could mostly start ignoring loot from this point forward. I didn't really like just stop looting in my case. Like I really wanted to like, you know, play this somewhat normally. I didn't try to like ultra try hard to like, you know, ignore loot on the ground that you would do in like a race, for example. And so I still picked up all the stuff at the end of the vault, for example. And there were some upgrades I got. So even looking at those items, um, that was a bit of an advantage because here and there I did replace like my ring or I replaced like, you know, my, my helm or something along the way. But ultimately I had most of the same gear all the way to 100 or I had some small improvements only. And most of the time it's also like around this level that you have found or you will find most of the important aspects for your build. Again, that depends a bit on the class and the build you're playing. But in the case of the Rogue, for example, there's not really anything super important that you can find. You get kind of like most of the stuff from the Codex. There's like the IC Alchemist aspect, for example, that's kind of powerful. But in the end, yeah, at this point, you can expect that you have found most of the aspects that you want. And you can at least put them like on your neck and then just carry it on, you know, forever until to the, the end of the leveling session. The only exception here really are the ring aspects, uh, the resource aspects in particular. They are really rare and very often you will actually go all the way to the 100 and don't find a certain resource aspect so this is something to take care about like when you decide on like a leveling build and you don't have that aspect already available from another character or something and it's really important it's really hard to solve your resources on that build for example and you really require that certain aspect bone spear for example would be one of those cases where you want to get that exposed flesh aspect it's really powerful and right now in season three you're lucky it's in the codex but normally that's not the case and the build can definitely feel a bit crippled without this important resource aspect now every class has their own ways of solving resources but this is kind of like the main thing to go after once you are in Torment difficulty and you have those ancestors. You want to get those resource rolls on the rings, you want to get to the resource aspect at some point, and like this you can eventually unlock the full potential of a build where you just like spam all of your spenders as much as possible. But yeah, as you can see here, around four and a half hours to five hours in or so, I was in a com really comfortable spot here, able to like one-shot the entire packs, going through those vaults in like three minutes or so each, and I got a lot of XP. So the XP bar is like flying and you have to like <laughs> do my paragons on the side. And lucky for me, I've, you know, theory crafted like dozens of rogue builds at this point. So I can kind of do this on the fly, not even looking at the planner. And uh, I had a relatively decent setup in the end. This is kind of like how it went from here, just blasting through those vaults. And there's not really that much more to say. It's just that important that you always stay at the level where the monsters are 10 levels above you. So you see here, I'm finding level 78 right now. This is a tier 24, which is one tier too low of what would be the target. But again, this is kind of like a guideline. You don't have to do this. As long as the monsters die relatively quickly and you get through these runs without any trouble and it's fast and easy, this is perfect. And if you slow down too much by going higher level monsters, you can also go against monsters of your own level. But you really don't want to fight monsters below your level because you get an extreme penalty. So for example, uh, later on, let's say at level 80 or something, where uh, I want to fight uh, level... 90 monsters so you see this here this is the level 37 vault uh, monsters are level 91 here so again i'm like 10 levels under or 11 and uh, you could also farm for example 10 tiers lower you could farm like 26s here where monsters are your own level but you're gonna miss out on this experience bonus which is probably like a third or so less xp which is not the end of the world as long as the monsters are at least their own characters level so currently this is not a large problem because there's no bosses in the vault, so you can just skip Son of Malfa, so you can skip Butcher if you have trouble fighting them, and you're fine. There's, you know, nothing really that slows you down, and just fighting high-level, like, trash packs is not really something super hard most of the time. Most of the time, the bigger problem are the bosses. So in regular Nightmare Dungeons, you have bosses most of the time, and if you can't deal with those bosses efficiently, they can really slow you down and can slow down your leveling speed. And at least in normal seasons where there's no vaults, you might want to go to a lower difficulty or lower tiers so that you can deal with the bosses much faster. And that's pretty much it here. So this is the leveling journey of my rogue. 12 hours, 48 minutes. I just blasted through those vaults here, as you can see. 
I hit level 90 at around um, like nine and a half hours, for example. I hit level 80 at uh, roughly uh, seven and a half hours or seven, uh, 715, 720. So yeah, it kind of slows down as you go. The data levels become a lot longer, but even, you know, level 99 to 100 maybe takes like twice or maybe three times as long as like the first levels that you get in Torment difficulty. So the leveling curve is, you know, not so steep as in other games, for example, where like the last three levels take uh, significantly longer. It has like this insane exponential curve, for example, in D2 or PoE or something like that. And here it's like relatively evened out, which is like requiring a bit more every level with a few breakpoints, for example, 50 and 70. But outside of that, it's just like a smooth leveling journey. And well, I just try to be fast. I try to stay efficient and uh, finish um, level 100. And here we are. So 12 hours 48, that was the moment here. I just went to, into the, like, the last run here and I uh, got some big explosions. I load up and then I said goodbye to that vault. <laughs> now, this is just the journey of like leveling to 100 as fast as possible. You can obviously do this way faster in groups because you can split farm. So for example, in groups, it would probably be the way to go like Chambers Demise and Blind Burrows and all these like really good split farming dungeons. And then like either just leech for other people or at least clear together and the experience is shared zone-wide or instance-wide at least. So that's um, how group play works if you want to be efficient. But for solo, you just blast these balls, you go really fast. And this is about it. Of course, you don't really get all the rewards that you want to get at this point. You don't get any durial materials. And generally, I would recommend that you also do some other stuff on the way there because not everyone can just grind 13 hours non-stop and do the same thing over and over. Well, I can, but I know that other people also want to just enjoy more variety. And if you ever want to do more than just farming vaults, then you should do it before level 100, more so than at level 100 in, in my book. So for example, if you want to grind up some of those durial mods, what I do very often is I just try to boost the character as fast as possible to torment difficulty. And then I start grinding some whispers. I start grinding some hell tide there. Because again, as I mentioned earlier, you want to get through world tier three as fast as possible. World tier one and two offer you nothing. So world tier four is where it's at. And this means this is where you can also like start leveling up maybe a bit slower, but you get some stuff that you can use later once you're 100. You can do durial runs, etc. And as long as your clear speed is fine and you have like decent mobility, for example, farming hell tides and whispers is a really good idea all the way up to level 100. And then at level 100, you can focus more on the nightmare dungeons. You can level up your glyphs much faster. So while this is like a racing strategy to just stay in the vaults all day long, you don't really get much else of the stuff you need for, for example, summoning the bosses. And you don't want to do it that much at 100 because you don't get XP anymore. Another few small tips I can give you for leveling up quickly is also that, uh, at least on a PC, you can try to get comfortable with WSD movement. They have introduced this in this patch and you can see this here in action right now. I use this all the time, for example, here in the vault in the final room. I just sort out the loot and running circles with WSD. Uh, while I'm dodging the attacks and I look at the items and I see that, you know, I found something here and just try to prepare already for teleporting out of the vault and, you know, immediately salvaging my items, etc. So at least, you know, while you're, like, you know, powerful and tanky enough to, like, kind of not worry about what's going on on the screen, uh, this was a very useful inclusion in my speedrunning strategies and also helped a lot to just, you know, go faster and have less downtime. Now, I still have the problem that every time you finish a vault, you have like, you know, 200 items dropping on the ground and you really want to pick up those tuning stones. I wanted to like, you know, as I, as I said earlier, I didn't want to ignore the loot to go faster, which you could do because, you know, at this point, I don't need more loot just to level up. But I also wanted to, you know, save up materials. I wanted to level up my construct, etc. And in this case, I actually did pick up the loot and you always get greeted with like an entire inventory worth of stuff at the end, which is very annoying. But this is how it is. And in this case, I just try to minimize the time I spend looking at those items. I try to like sort them out as fast as possible by going through them, maybe glancing at them like a second or so. And uh, if there's anything that strikes me immediately, like as being very good, I might reconsider. But otherwise, I just assume everything is trash. Everything goes to the vendor or to the blacksmith and that's it. So this is why I like to use this marker salvage function because it allows me to like glance at the items and still mark them really quickly and 
sometimes I can undo that mistake if I see something oh, that, that might have been an item I want to keep, for example. But as I said earlier, most of the time the items you find leveling up are not really so relevant compared to the stuff you get later on once you start farming 925 loot at level 100. That doesn't mean that all of the loot is worthless. You can definitely find items that are not 925 that are really valuable as long as they're not weapons. So jewelry basically caps out at like 860 or something anyway. And you don't need higher than that on jewelry because the all rest just kind of like stop scaling. And that's really the only thing that scales outside of like maximal knife rolls, which also cap out somewhere around that level. And then you have armor pieces that uh, again can have maximal knife or for example, the just armor value. But armor is not really a big concern with the juggernaut aspect these days. So it's definitely worth looking at the items a little bit, but I wouldn't really spend too much time on it until later when you're farming 925 loot. And that's also about it for this video. So this is just the journey of my recent, you know, speed run 1 to 100. If you want to learn more about the Rogue, I have to link in the description as well. This is the Penner F build. I made a video about this like two weeks ago here. You can go check it out. This is basically the setup. I tweaked it a little bit lately. Uh, so the planner is also there. And also of that, I do have a progression guide as well for 1 to 100 that also covers a bit more of the things I said and more. So you can also go check that out. But for now, this is what I got here. So I hope you enjoyed me and like, you know, talking about my journey and the strategy. I hope this helps you when you're leveling up your next character. And as always, hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you guys next time.